Hello and welcome back to another tutorial for Tech 4474 Automation and Robotics here at the University of Memphis. Uh, we're going to work on palletizing today and I'm not going to go through all the nitty-gritty steps on this but basically I'm going to show you the basics for getting the robot to go to each one of these pipe locations with the teaching of only really three points, the three points you see on the screen currently. Um, I've got my home position which is where it is now. I've got the approach position, which is above the, the piece of pipe, and a pick location, which is inside the piece of pipe. I'm not going to worry about doing the logic for opening and closing the gripper, or even really placing the parts, because the logic is functionally the same, just kind of in reverse if you think about it. So, discussions in class have included need to do kind of housekeeping at the top of your program. And so we're going to do a couple of things. One of them is sort of a safety net in case you mess up your program. One of the idiosyncrasies of the Yaskawa interface is that if the job is stopped and the shift is turned on, if I start the job up somewhere else, it still retains that shift information. And so one of the things that you might want to think about doing if you're doing shifts in your program is to do a shift off uh, kind of at the top before you do anything else just to make sure that you are starting at a known location. The next thing we need to do is some clearing of values and so I'm going to use the clear instruction and let's do that and we're going to clear we only really need two counters in, in this instance and so let's change this to a two and we're oops and we're going to do that and then I want to reset my position variable that I'm going to be using ultimately and so I can do that through subtract instruction which as we've talked about in class allows me to allows me to clear a variable because subtracting anything from itself does in fact result in a clearing of that variable it sets it back to zero right all right, now we need to do uh, two more things. We're going to put in a pair of, well, let's put in one initially, uh, label. We are going to call this label something other than label. Uh, so I'm going to clear that. And using the keyboard so I don't have to type on the interface, we are going to call this uh, inner. And... You'll see why I call it inner in a few minutes. So once we've done that, we can come down. We have our moves. One of the things we're going to want to do is we want to maintain the home position as it is. We don't want to do any shifting on that home position until we're closer to where we need to do that. And so I'm actually going to insert the shift after the home position. And we're going to do a shift on P000. And I'm going to talk about that more in a minute. And that will then apply the shift to anything else in my job until I get to a shift off. I'm going to leave that alone for the moment. And we're going to go over to our variables since we're kind of dealing with them. And in position, if I go to P000, it has a value from when I was doing some other stuff. So I can come down here and change that back to a zero just for simplicity's sake. P001 is going to be our movement in the negative x direction, because remember x plus minus is forwards and reverse here. Y plus minus is left and right. Um, and we happen to know these are 65 by 65 on center. And so I want an x of negative 65 there. And so I'm going to move, but because my position is cleared, the first time I do this, my approach and my pick locations will still be the same. I'm going to come down. I would now need to do my logic for opening and closing the grip gripper. And so I'm going to just put in a comment here to indicate that. And instead of programming, I've just done that. And then we've picked it. We're going to now need to retract. And so I can come over here and select that, edit, copy, and I can use my approach the same as my retract position or my retreat position, depending on what, how you want to refer to it. 
So I've picked it, I'm grabbing it, I'm, remo I'm moving away from it, and for the purposes of this simple program, we're going to go back up to the home position. Uh, but again, because I don't want that home position to be modified with the shift instruction, I'm actually going to insert my inform or my uh, shift off instruction here. And then I can do my home position. And again, I'm going to just copy that and come down to here. We're going to paste that. And so now our logic is to go to home, approach, pick, grab, uh, retreat, turn off the shift, go back to home. Now we can put in our logic to say, do I need to jump back up to the top again? So I'm going to go control, jump, and we're going to change this back to inner. And we're going to change that back to zero. Less than four, because we're going to do four of these. And so now we jump back up to our inner instruction, if that's happening. So we can test that real fast. And it's going back and forth to the same location, because we haven't done our addition on the position uh, shift yet. But it should only do it four times. Well, actually, it's going to go forever, because we forgot to put that in. Okay, so there's our jump. Uh, we're checking for that. However, we need to, before we do that, we need to increment our counter. So we're going to increment B000, insert. And so now we're going to move to home, increment a counter. Check that. We also need to increment our shift amount. So we need to insert into here logic to increment our position variable as well. And so go to inform, arithmetic, add. Got to make sure this is set to P000 and P001. And we're going to insert that. And a reminder, if we were to want to do that, and these were not P000 on the root instruction here where it says add, I can come up here, come over to the down arrow here, hit select, and make sure that is set to a P. And so that's already there. So now we're going to increment our counter. We're going to increment our position. Uh, remember, we set our position variable of P001 to negative 65, which is that value there. Now, if we were to test this, it should go to the first one and then march its way back. And it's doing that, as you can see. And then it's done. So that is the first row. We need to do the second row. That is why I called this inner. We are going to add another label here called outer. And we can call them something else if we want to. Those are the phrases that make sense to me. We could, we could call it X and Y. Doesn't really matter. So cancel. I'm going to type it in because it's easier. And we're going to insert that. And then we're going to come down here. So after we've done our four tests, we got to the fourth one, we realized, oh, hey, we're done. Time to shift over to the next row, next home, whatever you want to call it. And so we are going to need to do a couple of things. One of them is we need to reset B000. So that is going to be a set B000 to select to a value of zero. So now that we have it set to a uh, set B000 done, we also need to tell the system to increment the Y information. So a form, inform again, we're going to go to add again. And this time, instead of P001, we're going to use P002. Now, what I'm going to do here, and I've already actually done, is set the Y value to 65. So plus Y is left and right, or is left, or to the right here. Um, and so this is 65 here, this is 65 there, uh, in both directions. And so now it's going to set that back. And then we need to do one other thing because if we don't, what will happen is it'll shift over, but it'll continue to march further back uh, beyond the fourth uh, position. We want to come back up to an X of offset of zero. 
And so I can use an instruction that I briefly mentioned in passing called set E. And this allows me to set an element, and I'm going to set the element of P00, the, el the first element, and I'm going to set it to a value of 0. And so what this does, let's insert this real fast, uh, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So by setting element 1 in a position variable, uh, I am functionally setting the, go back to P000, I'm going to set this negative 260 back to a 0. All right, so that's set. Once that's done, I can do another jump. I'm going to make this a little bit faster by copying it and pasting it and then just modifying the value. We're going to call this next one outer. And we're going to set this to a value of 2 because there's only two columns. All right. And so the last thing we need to do is add the incrementer for B00. Whoops, I forgot to change that. Uh, for B001, we need to increment that one more so that um, we have that test as well. And so now I can come up to here and I can add another increment instruction. And we're going to set that to B001 instead of B000. And that will now give us the ability, when we come through here, after we've done B000 four times, increment that, increment that, well, reset that, excuse me, increment that, add that, set our X offset back to zero, and do our jump if we're less than two on there. So let's go ahead and run our job now. Okay, and so as you can see, I could then add multiple columns, multiple rows. I can even reset everything back and do multiple layers. Um, I can set my P001 to the X value, P002 to the Y value, and P003 to my layer or my Z values. Um, I can do the exact opposite for unloading, and that is pretty much everything I wanted to show you in this uh, video. A little longer than I was hoping, but not too bad. As always, thanks for watching.